Hello, and welcome back to Murphy's Welcome to My World, episode number seven. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Hunterline 86 foot How Truss Deck Bridge Kit. It's a wood kit. Turned out to be a lot of good fun. I'd like to introduce you to it. This is a Canadian company that puts out a lot of different bridges and different scales. They give you nice detailed instructions, but the part that I like the best are these blueprint type prints that they give you. What you do is you build the kit right on top of these blueprints. Makes it really easy. Now when you open the packaging, what you find is a whole bunch of small packages of what well, looks like sticks. Which is okay, because we're going to put all those sticks together to make a bridge. Of course, if you're going to make repetitive, accurate cuts, there's nothing better than a chopper 2 by the Northwest Short Line Company. The one thing about the chopper is you got to make sure to keep the blade sharp. Put in a new blade on a regular basis. Well, like I said, you build these parts right on top of the blueprints. I use double-sided sticky tape. And you just put one layer on top of another on top of another. Now this particular kit, you're going to be putting a lot of tension rods in, so you got to drill a bunch of holes. I ended up buying from Micromark one of these power drill bits, tiny little drills. And as you see, you have to drill these holes and put these tension rods in. They're kind of a pain in the butt, takes a lot of time, but as you get done, you start to understand what it's for. And they really look great. After you put these torsion rods in, make sure to sand them off. Make sure it's good and smooth because things are going to be going on top. Hey, and here are some of the things you are putting on top. Sometimes you're going to be putting dissimilar things like this plastic and wood together, which I use CA glue, super glue. We're at a very important step here. When you glue the ends on, you want to make sure that the bridge is very square and plumb. You want to make sure that it's very correct because the rest of the bridge won't be right. Now this was my personal hardest part, putting all these internal cross bracing in. Take your time, make sure they're correct the first time around. Now we've been working on the top deck. Once again, you just build it right on the blueprints using the double sided tape. It doesn't have to be exact, just flat. Here you see the two parts almost ready to go together. There's a couple of things you got to do before you glue them together though. First thing is you got to make sure that the decking is very flat and consistent because the top's not going to sit straight if it's not very flat. And of course, I like to use a lot of handy helpers, weights and stuff like that, and you can see my favorite choice in wood kits, Elmer's White Household Glue. So here's the finished kit. I made it HON3 because I like that scale. And then it's off to the spray boost to give it some color. I talked about the Hunter Line having a number of different bridges, kits, and scales, and here's two of them. Our subject bridge is the one on the bottom, of course. They have a lot of fun stuff. Now this was such a nice bridge I decided I needed to make a display for it. So I went out and found some old leftover foam from who knows where, and you gotta have a basic idea what you want. Of course with a bridge you gotta have something to go over. So I made a little bit of a a little bit of a gully bridge area there. From there, I like to give it a hard shell. I like to use a product called Durham's Water Putty rather than uh, that white stuff because it's quite a bit harder. And of course, you got to start thinking about a little rock here, a little rock there. And this Durham's is wonderful for making rock molds. You ought to give it a try. If you've never used rock molds before, they're easy. One trick that I found with the rock molds is Mist them, get them a little bit damp before you put your whatever product is that you want to use to make the mold. Sometimes you have to hold them in place until the stuff goes off. Anything that works, well, it works. Now we're at a point to make sure that the bridge fits in and make sure that the track's going to go where you want it to. This is the time to make changes before you start putting the scenic detailing on. And here's the scenic detailing, the first layer anyway. I like to put a little of this and a little of that on. I slop on some of the white glue first, get it all over the place, then kind of put a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and let it set up. Of course, you're going to have to have some water. I personally like the deep pour woodland scenic stuff. Works really well, holds its shape, 
comes out nice and clear. Now putting the track on, I like to do it all in one shot. Slop some more of the white glue on, lay the track down, put the ballast right on top of it. You don't have to do different layers. It'll all come out just fine. Just make sure that it's held down. Well, here it is, almost ready to go. What do you think? It's almost looking like something, but it needs more. Now, what do I mean by needs more? Well, how about a backdrop? A backdrop immediately makes the scene look different. I add backdrops to all of my displays just because it fills it out. And lots of detail. Can you see what I did wrong here? See all the tall grass is right in line? Well, that didn't work out so good, so I had to change that around. Don't be afraid of changing things. If it's not exactly what you want, then change it. In detail, there's no such thing as too much detail. Put as much stuff as you have into a scene. If you end up not liking it, well, you can take it off and use it someplace else. And you don't have to buy all these details. Here's stacks of wood that I had just left over from the chopping. Hey, pile them up. Use anything you have laying around to fill that scene out. How about telephone poles? I love telephone poles, but I only like them if there's wires on them. And I like to use a product called Easy Line. It's really stretchy. It works really well. Put wires on your telephone poles. And as you put dioramas together, start thinking about individual little scenes within the big scene. In this case, it's a little sawmill. I always ask, what are these people doing and why are they out there? In real life, there's always a reason for almost everything. Very seldom is something just happening. And of course, if you have a sawmill, what do you have to have? You have to have stumps. Where are they getting all those trees from anyway? So here you have it, a wonderful 86-foot Howe Truss deck bridge from the fine folks at Hunter Line. Came out really nice. And of course, the display, the diorama, really highlights what a wonderful kit it is. If you guys need something to add a little spice to your layout, look into the Hunterline kit. Well, thanks for joining me here in episode number seven. Murphy's Welcome to My World. Come back again anytime. I'd love to have you. Have fun with your trains. Bye now.